Hello viewers, I'm SB, and welcome to Tenderfoot Tactics. As you might imagine from the name, it's a turn-based tactical combat game, and it's, um, it's unusual. There's some really interesting stuff going on here. I got about 45 minutes into it and decided, you know what, this is a journey of discovery that we all should undertake together. Uh, so I do not remember who recommended this to me. Uh, apologies, and thank you very much uh, to the person who brought this to my attention, because I think it's really cool, and I think it has an extremely striking uh, art style. Uh, which you can already see on display a little bit here. So let's get into it. Like I said, I've only played a little tiny bit. I don't really know how it works yet, and I have no idea how long this series is going to be because I have no idea how big the game is. But I'm excited to uh, I'm excited to dig into it with y'all. So right away, you can see what I was talking about with the art style. It's uh, un unusual is the word I will use again. And Pascal, our leader, I guess, says, "Look, the tower. Perhaps the spirit is within." All right, so we just got to make it over to that tower here. Uh, we have this overworld where we can move pretty much freely. Uh, you know, normal WASD movement. We have a jump, and we also have a crouch slide that has, like, tribes ascend type um, feel to it, which I really dig. So you can see goblins are very good jumpers, apparently. Very, very impressive vertical. And then we can do this. We end up not, not going to the ocean, preferably. So we have a button down here that is flashing. This is our party information button. Right now we got three goblins, Willow, Pascal, and Nettle. Uh, I think all player characters are always goblins based on the way the tutorial talks about our people. Uh, so we got a person with a bow, a person with a sword, and a person with a, uh, like a, a staff, like a mage type character. And no equipment, listen, we'll dig into all this stuff later. For right now, let's go to the tower. The, uh, the slide is not very useful for moving uphill, as you might imagine. And yet, and yet you will see me pressing the button all the time, because sliding is fun. Oh, it's empty. We should wait. The spirit was here recently. They will return. But, but isn't it dangerous out here, with the fog so near? We'll hole up inside. Hopefully the spirit does not take our entrance as a breach of trust. Generally speaking, it's not like super cool to just walk into a stranger's house when they're not home. But in the dark of night, a bang and a crash reverberating through the tower. The door blown clear off its hinges. The three jumped to their feet, groggy but still armed and ready for battle. So here's your here's your standard turn-based tactical combat thing. So goblins take turns one at a time in an order specified on the turn order display along the right side of the screen here. The number of turns until a goblin goes next is also indicated above their head, which I think is a really nice touch for just battlefield readability. On your turn, you may move once and act once in any order. You may also wait at any time to skip the remainder of your turn. At the start of battle, uh, we have a little deployment zone marked out on our side of the map. We can uh, place your goblins anywhere you like within the deployment zone. You can also adjust their initial turn order by dragging and dropping within the turn order display on the right. I really like this feature, and I wish that more games did this. It's very common in um, like D&D style games for you to be able to just wait until a later time in the initiative order whenever you want, and I don't know why it's so uncommon in video games, but I really like that this feature's here. Uh, their default deployment state is determined by their order in the party menu that we were looking at a minute ago, which we can adjust with just a drag and a drop to, uh, to set a default turn order. So right now we have Willow with the bow first, then Pascal with the sword, then Nettle with the uh, with the wand. I'm gonna have my ranged people go first, and we're also gonna set up our ranged people behind the table. Okay, I'm good. Let's begin. Warriors, surely you do not hide from us. Why would you come to gain the strength of a spirit when the strength of the whole fog could be yours? So, obviously, I don't know too much more about the storyline than you do, because I only played a little bit, but, uh, the fog seems bad. Seems, it seems like a kind of a negative fog. Uh, so this is something that's really interesting to me. When moving or acting, various natural systems run their simulations. Water, soil moisture, plant growth, and fire. You can check the status of these systems within a grid square by looking at the banner on the bottom left. So anytime we have a square highlighted, this banner will be visible on the screen. Uh, natural systems run on time steps, progressing slightly every tick. 
The tick counter below the banner will show how long any action will take. The higher the number of ticks, the further the natural systems will progress while the action is being taken. Moving costs four ticks, plus another four for each space that you actually move. Actions take 24 ticks each. An average turn will, you know, often take 30 to 40 ticks. So there are these... There are these, like, dynamic systems, like things burning and plants growing, that are running all the time while we're, while we're doing stuff. I have no idea how relevant that's going to be to our gameplay or how we can manipulate those things, but I think that's such an interesting idea. It's almost like, um, like a Noita or Oxygen Not Included type of environmental simulation running within the tactical game that I think is just... I mean, first of all, unusual, not a thing I've seen in other games, and secondly, like, fascinating to me. Uh, so, I think we were supposed to get a tutorial, did I skip one, uh, about combat movement. Uh, goblins can move up to four spaces on their turn. It, this seems to be a thing that doesn't change with any stat or anything. Uh, difficult terrain, such as thick brush, costs all your remaining movement to enter, and you can tell when a space is difficult terrain because it has these hash marks on it. Cliffs cost one extra movement to jump up per height difference, and the Horizontal lines on it indicate the number of height difference points. So you can see it would cost two points to move from here to here. Well, three. One for the movement and then two for the height. Um, which is potentially relevant here because we are about to start moving around into, uh, into difficult terrain. So I think we're going to attack first because this guy is totally within our range. So Willow has two abilities. Shoot person with bow. And you can see it just does 32 damage. There's no hit or miss chance in this game, and attacks don't have a damage range. It seems like combat's going to be very deterministic, which I like. Uh, and then we have this anesthetize ability. It costs 10 plant, so maybe you can only do it in a space where... Because you can see this banner along the left side already, right? Indicating the space that we are in. I wonder if anesthetize can only be done in a space that has 10 points of plant already. Uh, which means we probably couldn't do it in ours. Uh, it gives plus 12 max health to the person we cast it on and reduces the effect of unnerve. We'll talk about unnerve in a moment. Uh, I'm just going to shoot this guy with my bow. And then we are going to back all the way up into the, uh, into the furthest tile away from the enemy. And then the last thing we do on our turn is we select facing. Facing matters a lot. It is bad to get hit in the back. The dawn of an empire is upon you, and this, tonight, is your chance to become an important individual in the making of the next age. Lay down your weapons. Silence! I know this lie! Such an empire will never bend to the will of its servants. Aspirants to that scale of power will only find themselves tools to it. Ha! From within you will be servants? Tools? From without you will be nothing! Our power is vast, far beyond the pitiful little town you hail from. We are the only future. Come, let us show you. So like I said, the fog seems bad. It seems like a, uh, real, a real kind of menacing fog. Uh, so we just looked at this combat movement tutorial. Uh, at the end of a goblin's turn, you decide what direction they face. When a goblin is hit from the side or back, they'll be unnerved, which knocks them backward in the turn order. Controlling turn order in this way is essential for good strategy. So, um, facing and formation are both going to be really important to making sure that we're not constantly getting knocked backward in the turn order, and thus never getting a turn. Uh, so let's go ahead and unnerve this guy a little bit, shall we? Nettle has no minimum range on their attack, so why don't we, why don't we start by moving to here? I mean, do we know what kind of weapon this guy's using? This guy has, it looks like... It looks like a wand, so we probably wouldn't be able to be safe from them anyway. Let's just go ahead and go to here. And then we're gonna have at you and give you unnerve one. As you can see, it bumped him back one space in the uh, in the turn order, which seems pretty significant, and then face that guy. All right, and Pascal is just gonna, obviously, the knocking this guy back in the turn order is going to be irrelevant because of course we are just going to slay him. When an enemy is knocked out, they'll drop a spirit cloud on their grid space. Walking one of your goblins through the spirit cloud will cause that goblin to gain whatever experience the enemy dropped, pushing you closer to a level up. 
Spirit Clouds also heal you for a small amount. If experience gained causes a level up, the Goblin will heal to full health. At the end of combat, remaining Spirit Clouds will be divided evenly over your surviving Goblins. So, we have a lot of control over the rate at which our characters level up. I don't yet know how to optimize for that, because I don't actually I don't exactly know how important it is to level up, you know, in terms of like strength gain and stuff. We'll worry about it later. No, oh, we just looked at this. What am I doing? No, let's close these. Okay. So we're back around to Willow. Willow sadly cannot unnerve this opponent, and I think we're one space out of attack range, right? Yes, yeah, so let's fix that. Also, I kind of dig the music. I like the uh, I like the tension here. All right, so unfortunately, this one is going to get to hit us. I don't know if damage is persistent between combats. I think it's not. So all that really matters is that we survive. All right, give him the unnerve. So we didn't really look at our uh, our character's other abilities. Uh, Nettle here has first aid, and Pascal has this grenade, which does 27 damage and can break destructibles. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and give this guy the grenade right now. So I want to make sure I throw this in a way that doesn't hit my own dude. I'm pretty sure friendly fire is a thing. Let's move Pascal to here to pick up the spirit cloud, and then we're gonna grenade like this. Apparently this table is not destructible with a grenade. So wow, Pascal really took the lion's share of the XP there. <laughs> Bloodied and thoroughly roused, the goblins blocked up the door as best they could with what furniture they found nearby, and in a quiet, sustained panic, they waited for the fog to come again. But it did not. Many hours passed, and finally, as the sun took its place in the mid-morning sky, they saw the spirit approaching, and quickly cleared the door and went out to greet them. So yeah, that's the spirit. Uh, oh, great spirit, it is I, Pascal, honor guard, honor guard of Hork. Do, do you remember me? I love this so much. I, there's, a, there's a weirdness here that I really, really appreciate. Oh? I do not remember much, little Pascal. I am afraid I find myself much diminished. Today, at least. And perhaps yesterday as well. Surely tomorrow. <laughs> Mighty Spirit Tangerine. Spirit, we, we three come to be of service to you, to join with you, in exchange for the gift of your magic, that we be, we be made stronger by your grace. <laughs> I am very weak, and can offer you little just now. It may be some time until I can return you to your homes. But if you would stay with me, I would be grateful for the help. And so they did stay. But their presence seemed only to diminish the spirit further, and the spurts of self that came through were not so clear at all. What did come through turned them always westward. They didn't fully understand why, but they knew that they needed to make a trip, and they felt that they might not return. So, back out here, being forced to make a trip, guided westward, uh, but we have a little bit of help. We can use the middle mouse button to scroll up into the sky as a bird. Uh, as a bird, you'll be able to see markers you can't see from the land. Finding and claiming more birds from the wilds will let you fly higher and see farther, as you will see in a moment here. Uh, our vision is fairly limited at the moment. We can, we can see a resting place way out there, and also some nettle. So, like, there's herbs around in the world, and when we gather them, we get experience. There's a fragmentary memory far, far off in the distance. Wow. Apparently the game world's quite large. Um, but, like, like I'm saying, as you can see, we can't really get very far from the goblins. Like, this is, this is the furthest it will let me go. So, the good news is, doing that showed me that there is, in fact, some nettle over here as well. Can I read this sign? What does it say? Oh, it's a map. Uh, so this would be us? Right? That's approximately what the tower looks like. Yeah, it's got the little, the little bit jutting out on the side. So this is the island we're on now, and this is... The, okay, well... 
<laughs> it seems like the game world might be very large indeed. In towns and some other locations around the archipelago, you'll find physical map boards. Viewing them will add them to your map collection, which you can bring up by pressing the map button in the bottom right corner. Maps mark locations that map makers might find useful for wayfinding or dangerous enough to be worth avoiding. Maps don't have any special magical properties that would show you where you are on them. Be warned, map makers may not agree on concepts of north. Oh, that's interesting. This, this one we're just looking at, does it? It does not, in fact, have a compass rose. So we are being told that we feel a pull westward, but that may not actually be this way. Okay, that's... that's interesting. Let's go grab some nettle, or some rosemary, rather. 75 XP. Did that, um... That was not for everyone. Oh, we picked up another goblin. Okay, I think we're gonna... Can I... Yeah, there we go. Okay, just put the ranged people in, in front. So it tells you who gets the XP. It just, it just goes to one person. And it looks like we probably don't have the ability to um, to change that. We, we probably don't have the ability to determine who's getting what. It's all right. We'll just pick up a whole lot of resources. So the fragmentary memory was in this direction, right? Man. Just like the aura of this world, sort of the the energy of it, I think is really, really strange. Okay, Nettle gets 75 XP. It does not feel like a lot of other things that I have played, and I'm really into it. Let's take a second here. Uh, so the fragmentary memory is across the water, though. In fact, a lot of stuff is across the water. Oh, actually... We can't even really see where the land ends. Okay. Well, I guess let's just keep moving. What is this? We have a spooky zone with guys in Oh, this is probably an encounter. So as you can tell, this is about how far I got before I decided that I, I wanted to do a series about the thing. So is this combat time? We walked into the spooky place and now it is spooky here. Huh. All right, well, let's see what happens. What happens is I've, I've angered them. I wonder if we're actually selecting the terrain for the combat by, like, luring them to new places. So let's talk about... Well, I guess let's talk about this, and then we're going to talk about the that ribbon on the left. Uh, in combat, you can move the thing around. Okay, obviously, I internalized this already. So over here, we can see... Uh, we select a grid space. I guess... It's hard to actually get the uh, mouse over to that little ribbon without changing what space you're highlighting. Uh, but let's let's pick a space over here on the edge that has a big bush in it. Okay. So fire, plant growth in the selected grid space. High plant growth will eventually create dense brush, which makes difficult terrain. Uh, soil mo moisture in the selected grid space. Plants will require moisture to grow. I it's not 100% clear to me, and obviously we'll work it out as we uh, as we play whether. We have to do something for plants to be able to grow, and they'll only grow in places where there's moisture, or whether moisture will by itself cause plants to grow at a rate that matters during combat. Uh, water depth in selected grid space. Goblins can't act when they're in deep water. And then the ground height of the selected grid space. So we do have an indicator for that on, on top of the uh, horizontal lines thing. So... We have four goblins, they got three, they have... Oh no, they have also four, because I can I can see. Two, uh, two bows, two swords. Well... Obviously we want to take out their ranged units first. I mean, that that's... I say obviously, maybe that's not even the case. But, you know, usually in a tactics game, you want to, you want to take out their ranged uh, units first. Maybe we do want to swap... Here, let's have, um... So let's see, you also know Numb. Let's swap... Who hits harder? 38 and 44. I'm going to have Pascal actually go first. We're going to have Pascal be here, and he's going to rush their ranged unit right away. Do we have a sense of the overall turn order? Sometimes when I, when I mouse over certain parts of the field, it shows the expanded turn order. Here we go. Okay. So we're going to be alternating with them? Is that true even if we change our, um... Yes, okay. 
we're going to start combat alternating with them. So Pascal will get to go before this guy, then this guy gets to go. The other, their other ranged unit is quite late in the turn order. It might be best we have our ranged units over here. Let's make Willow second. We'll try to unnerve this guy a bit. You know what, let's... Actually, let's leave one of the ranged units over on this side. Sorry, I know I'm, like... I'm strategizing a lot for what is probably a very easy battle. But I'm just trying to come to grips with the system. Because this guy's not necessarily going to get to act second, right? Because we're going to unnerve him. So we can push him even further down in the turn order. Uh, which means I want you to go next, actually. Alright, let's try it like this. We're just playing with it. We're just, we're just getting the feel of the systems. So let's have you move over here. Wait. Oh, you can't do that because of this bush. Yeah, good point. I did not notice... Th yep, okay. Well, that's fine. We're gonna move here. And then we're gonna throw a grenade. Alright. Still unnerving. Unnerving enough. And then Nettle... See, that's a problem, because Nettle only has a three-tile attack range. So, I didn't... I thought Nettle was going to be able to move to this space. From here, you can see it gives you an indication of your, uh... Indication of where your attacks can reach, which I really appreciate. Um, so actually, maybe what I want to have Nettle do is just wait, because I screwed this up. Let's, uh... Yeah, just wait a second. Interesting. Okay, so yeah, you can see the bushes are actually growing at a speed that matters during combat. Uh, let's have Nyx. So Nyx is... I wonder if we're able to attack up a... Uh... Oh, I can't get over there anyway. Sorry, yeah, we're, we're playing Willow, not Nyx. I'm... Um, I wonder if I'd be able to attack, though, as Nyx, if I'd be able to attack up that amount of space. You are just going to shoot this guy, which he will find very unnerving. Also, it turned him toward us. I don't think that I knew for sure that would happen. That's good to know. Uh, I think we're good. And then I'm going to have you move to here, and it looks like it will let me attack that one. I'm going to instead just punch this guy in the side. Then, yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter which way I face, because I'm going to get it hit in the side by one of these two, if they want to. Okay, well, we got some, uh, we got some kills in store here. Let's... Boy, your movement's a little awkward, and unfortunately they managed to spread out in a way that makes the grenade very ineffective. I think I'm probably just gonna just gonna swing straight on. And then we may have um I'm gonna move you to here. And we'll just have our, our other goblin pick up the kill here. Uh, but I will move to here before I do it. I think it, it, maybe it's a slingshot rather than a wand. It looks like a slingshot animation. Oof. So we have a really nice, um, we have a really nice natural bottleneck here, but also I'm real worried about my HP. So are you allowed to shoot through the tree? I wonder. Oh, it says I'll be able to hit that guy from here. I guess I probably ought to just kill this one. And then we can have Willow, or we can have um, Nyx run up and hit that guy. I will learn our characters' names eventually. Oh, right, I didn't count that right. I thought I was going to be able to move to here. Okay, well, we'll just move to here, that's fine. What is the range on Anesthetize? 
Okay, it's quite long, actually. All right, we're not going to do it here. Uh, move to there. I do find the symbology a little bit unintuitive. This is absolutely not the developer's fault. But I see that symbol that they've chosen for move, and I think, oh, attack. It's a crosshair, right? So that's a thing that's going to take me a moment to get used to. Ooh, 1 HP. Okay. Uh, it'll be fine. They'll be fine? We don't have any, we don't have any idea. I'm going to try to stick to they until we have some idea. Uh, so, Pascal, I mean, you're not going to be able to crush that guy. The grenade seems un... Yeah, grenade doesn't seem like a great play. And we don't really have the ability to unnerve this one, which is a problem. But Nettle does know first aid. What's, what's first aid? 57 health. Okay, so we're probably fine. I'm just going to attack this dude right here. Oh, wait, it's, sorry, it's Neville's turn right now. I'm getting all... I'm not looking at the turn order, I'm just remembering what the turn order looked like last turn. But right, there was some unnerving that occurred. Okay, so we have to move to here if we want to do that first aid. And I really do want to do that first aid. That seems like a considerable amount of HP. Now it's Pascal's turn. Let's smash. Alright, and then, yeah, just stay right there, face it this one. Wow, was that on nerve 3? That's harsh. You have 32 health left. Can we... we can get to a position... Oh, no, we probably can't. The, the damn plants have grown me in. Yeah, we just barely can't reach that guy. All right, well, we'll move forward, try to get a little bit of space. I need to keep an eye on the terrain. So, okay. The little grassy plant life gives us an indication of where growth is happening so that we can know where we need to be wary of with the bushes. But it's not super obvious, so hold on. This one is soil moisture. No, the grass does not only appear in places where there is soil moisture. We'll, uh, we'll get it over time. We'll get a better, a more intuitive sense of what's going on with all these systems. Alright, well, I guess I'm shooting you because it's all I can do. Uh, he'll probably be fine, right? I, <laughs> I sure hope. Uh, so you're not going to be able to attack the really weakened one, no matter what we do with you. Uh, I really don't know if it's best to try to push one goblin to level up really quickly, or whether we want things spread out. I'm going to just wait. I'm going to leave that stuff on the ground. And we'll let the XP spread out for the moment. Alright, and then you have a real easy turn. Hey, we found some stones. Hooray! Might have some, uh, might be some hoarder would find value in it. Okay, so these are maybe... This one apparently can be spent for health, or it increases max health. Oh, that seems significant. And then this one's just currency. So, okay. Uh, did our wounded... No, it's, it's not even tracking their health. Okay. So it looks like falling in combat doesn't have any long-term consequences or anything. Uh, so... I guess... Put this in your inventory? Yeah, because Pascal's gonna be standing in front of stuff a lot. Oh, the, the plants that we picked up are actually doing things. It's not just XP. That's really interesting. Okay. Well, we'll uh, keep an eye on that. Do we want to swap these around at all? I think I like having attack boosting. Oh, it increases damage and healing. That's cool. Yeah, I think I like having the attack boosting stuff on the ranged people. And... I, we'll swap the Juniper on to Pascal because, again, we're looking at probably Pascal taking a lot of the damage. What does Evolve do? 
Oh, okay. These are... There are more classes to unlock. And some of them are very secret. So how do we start unlocking stuff? Get a goblin to four to get knight and archer. And then... Okay. Alright, we're working on it. And groom is just change your cosmetic traits. Not, not even very much. The characters are intentionally very simple. There's a very simple visual design going on here. Alright, um, I would like it if we were a little more differentiated. I'm not allowed to give you a hat. Willow has a hat. How did Willow... Okay, well... I guess they bring their own hats. Either they have one or they don't. Uh, and then there's... Obviously, there's like a whole skill tree going on here, which I assume is unique per class, probably. Uh, when we get somebody enough XP to level up, we'll dig into that system a little bit more. Alright, hey bird, help. So that's home, that's where we came from. We're trying to go this way, but we worry that there may be uh, no land bridge, potentially. So when we see the markings on the ground, that indicates a place where combat can happen, maybe? I mean, it seems like we should do combat. It, it seems like there's no long-term cost to combat at all. So we should do combat if we can. That is, more enemies. But also, we're tactical geniuses. Why wouldn't we be able to handle this? I'm actually very worried. In case it wasn't clear. Uh, so... Yeah, this is rough, too. They're gonna... They're fast. You get a lot of turns right at the beginning. Well, that being the case, I sort of think we want to just start far away from them. Make them come to us. So let's start you over here, have Pascal be closest, Nettle should be nearby for first aid, and Nyx should also be nearby. You know what, I'm gonna do this. And I kind of don't want Willow to go early. I want Willow to go a little bit a little bit later so that more of them will have come forward by then. So let's have Pascal start. So we're going to have the range, their ranged unit's going to come in and attack. Then, I mean, he's going to he's gonna end up standing back here somewhere, though, right? I actually don't want Pascal to go this early, either. I, I kind of think our first turn's going to be a little bit wasted. Maybe it should be... Maybe it should be Nyx, and we should do an anesthetize? We should try it, at least. We don't, we don't know what it does. So I'm noticing that it never seems... It seems like the maximum value for any of the uh, things in the ribbon over here is 9. Which means that I clearly do not understand what minus 10 plant means. So we're going to try it. We're going to do this and see what happens. Also, an indication of the phase of the moon, which I guess is a thing that might eventually matter. Okay, you came forward a lot more than I thought you were going to. Okay, Nyx. Anesthetize. So it did not, in fact, change the amount of plant in... Oh, it changed the amount of plant in the target space. I, I don't know why I was, like, viewing it as a cost. But it's a reduction in the plant life in the target space, which has now fallen to zero. Right? It wasn't... It's, it, it might have been zero before. I'm, real, I'm realizing I'm not 100% sure of that. And then I think I don't really want Nyx to move forward, but I also don't want Nyx to move backward because Nyx is a melee attacker. So just chill? Alright, Pascal, do some work. Who... who needs to be attacked? We gotta be worried about our facing too, right? So after Pascal's turn... They're going to get two actions in quick succession. So we want to be careful about... I think I might just rush the bow guy, move to here. I want to be able to face most of the enemies. And I don't think... This guy won't be able to attack us, right? He doesn't have enough movement to move all this distance and then climb the cliff. So I think this is, this is damage that is fairly safe. Uh, our sword does 44, while our, our grenade will do 27 to 3 people. What is your health? 74. So actually, I'm pretty sure that we do want to hit for 44 here, because that means a bow strike on this guy will be lethal, which will not be the case if we grenade him. Also, the opposite of unnerve is called promote. Promote pushes units forward in the turn order. 
When a goblin has resistance to unnerve from passive skills or status effects, attacks that would normally cause zero unnerve instead cause promote. This can be very useful on goblins that take a lot of hits. Wow, okay, so anesthetize is way better than we thought it was. So, it, okay, attacks that would normally cause zero unnerve. So not attacks that cause zero unnerve because you resisted. It has to be something that would have hit you in the front already. That seems super powerful. All right, let's wall up this guy. And then, uh, yeah, please face this way. All right. Nettle. Nettle hits for how much? Okay, Nettle also hits for 32. So we can actually just drop the archer right now. Oh, no, I, can't, I haven't left myself much ability to move here, have I? Right, can't move through friendly units. That is a little unintuitive to me. That's not the way games usually work, but now we know. Uh, I'll just first aid. That seems fine. And then apparently you're waiting. I don't really want you to move into the difficult terrain over there, so... Okay. You can move as far as this, which is not ideal. The, I didn't plan enough for more bushes growing over the course of combat. So if I do move to here, it's going to be a while before this pack of enemies gets to go, but it's not not long enough for my taste. I'm definitely nervous. Let's just not move. In fact, I can move backwards, right? Yeah, we'll shoot one of them, then we'll move back. Because it seems like they're going to keep coming toward us, and... This will make it very, very difficult for them to access me. Alright, glad we went for the uh, for the first aid. So Nyx can just shut this guy down, right? Yeah, Nyx does 38 damage. Let's move right up to him and smash. Things are not quite working out the way I would the way I would hope because I am not grasping the systems quickly enough, but we'll get there. All right, so we got some promote from that. That was a lot of damage, though. Um, so the plant life grows in; it hedges you in really quickly. Like our ability to move is extremely limited now. Uh, we could move to here and throw a grenade. Gosh, I wish I could melee that guy. So the grenade would do 27 damage to you, bringing you down to 39, which is not enough. Yeah, I, I really want to be using sword strikes, I think, because we don't have a lot of AoE damage. We want to be reducing the number of enemies as quickly as possible here. That said... I'm not going to bring anything down in one strike anyway. Hey, here's a question. How does the grenade interact with a nerve? Let's find out. So if we launch a grenade attack from this space... Okay. It, it does unnerve those two, it doesn't unnerve the guy we're throwing it on. So it seems like unnerve is traced from the position of the attacker, not the position of, like, the point of attack. Well, I think the double unnerve is actually a pretty good idea here. So, Nettle. Nettle now has some attacks. Although, sadly, Nettle cannot quite attack the one guy that we would most want to attack. Uh, but we can soften up any of these others. Let's see, why don't you move to here? Now, Unnerve 1 won't be good enough, right? It, it won't push this guy down below Willow. So I'm gonna hit... I, attacking either one of these, we'll push them lower. We'll push them low enough that Willow gets the kill. So I guess it doesn't really matter who we do it to. Ooh, 
Oof, one HP. <laughs> You know, he did some good work. He, uh, he left us in a good enough spot, I think. So we have a really clean attack here. Oh, you aren't allowed to attack your own units. You probably shouldn't, but you absolutely can. Uh, and then... Do we want to move you? Because I could move a little bit in either direction. I, you know what? This space is still pretty safe from the enemies. And then we need to... We need to get rid of this guy, I'm pretty sure. So the question is just how do we do that? Unfortunately, there's no way to do that where I'm guaranteed to be safe from the counterattack here. Because if I attack here, whichever direction I face in, he can just go to the other side. So I guess it's not worth stressing about too much. And okay, we'll do it like this. Uh, we do not have the ability to move to a position where we would be able to execute a, uh, an unnerving attack on this one. So I guess we just hit him. Yeah, I think my plan right here is just to blitz these guys down as fast as we can. We'll take, we'll take another hit from him. Um, I think you are just standing there and serving as a blocker for Willow. Willow finishes you off, and then we have kind of a... I mean, it's a 2v1, but it's not great. So let's see. We're going to be able to hit this guy in the back for a pretty solid unnerve. And Willow's strong enough that Willow could take a, could take a hit. I'm going to move Willow out into the open. Just to be sure that there's no way... absolutely sure that there's no way that this guy could uh, make it so we can't hit him. Because obviously it's pretty important that we hit him. Uh, move to here and voila. Yeah, and the fact that attackers turn to... Or the, the fact that people who are hit turn to face their attacker is really useful. Oh, you're too close. That's right, your bow has a minimum range. I forgot all about it. Yeah, you can see here how incredibly powerful a nerve can be. Alright, so we got some herbs. Okay, cool. Hork thanks you. Two goblins lost from Hork can finally return home. Interesting. So population plus two gobs. And we got some rep. Alright, let's make sure that people are equipped with stuff. So, we got some rosemary, which is HP. Probably Nyx could use some HP. And then... Got marigold. Right, I'm gonna put even more damage on Willow. And then just like HP... And... HP. Okay. guys the, the rescued goblins oh great spirit please take me with you I mean yeah sure welcome aboard so that's uh, Pascal no that's a spirit sorry I'm Pascal <laughs> uh, boy it does say Pascal over there too you can understand my confusion apparently it's a common name what's up Scott what's up with spot spot is just a normal goblin who has no abilities well, that's a bummer. And we have nothing to uh, nothing to trade that is meaningful. Hi! Oh, sure, it's a cat, so, you know, meow. <laughs> hey, it is a cat. What do you know? Um... So it said 350 XP, which is pretty good. Uh, but also... Hold on. It looks like you have six units, which could be a little scary. 
I mean, we can we can leave it alone. I'm gonna leave it alone. It asks so nicely. Okay, so bird, help me out here. I've gotten a little turned around. Ah, it's actually right in our way. Well, will it let me just walk past it? It's actually quite menacing. We'll, we'll go around this way. We'll go up the hill and then... So it looks like there might actually be a narrow land bridge over there. We just have to get close enough to it to actually perceive it. You're very creepy. It's a very creepy thing. Uh, no. In fact, it appears there is no... There's no way over there. Can we just swim? Oh! If you go in the water, you just boat. Oh, okay, hold on. The boat steering is weird. Well, okay, we just learned a thing. We've landed in hostile territory. Potential. We, we've landed in an unknown territory that might be hostile. I guess let's find out. Hello, are we friends? You have a green line in front of you. Is that a friendly line? It is not. Uh, it might be a difficulty indicator. Green might be easy. Right, because this seems <laughs> this seems pretty straightforward. Uh, it doesn't really matter who goes first. Let's have people be on this side for the unnerves. Nettle and you. Okay. Where are they going to go in the turn order? So actually... Yeah, this... this I'm not... I'm overthinking it. This is going to be pretty straightforward, I think. Uh, and then... You're good. Alright, Nyx run... Or Nettle runs, like... Out here? I wonder if this will count as hitting him from the back. Do we... I think we get, we get an extra point of unnerve when hitting from the back. And yes, it does count. So it looks like... Whichever one would be most beneficial to you, it, it gives you, when, when, when you're evenly on the side and behind, it treats you as whichever one would be better for you. That's nice. Alright, very straightforward, and I mean, it's, it's worth doing battles, right? It's worth doing any battle you can, because XP matters. But it looks like sometimes we're just going to get very simple battles. Very very trivial stuff. Uh, and now it is... Oh, your turn. Spot. I have not left in a place where you can actually do anything. Uh, just move over here and then wait. My bad, Spot. Okay, it's not a ton of XP, but, you know, we're getting there on some people. So we found tightly woven chain, uh, tightly woven links of copper chain. So it's like a chainmail shirt. And then some blueberry. Let's, uh, let's fiddle with our equipment a little bit. Uh, Pascal, I know that you have all the good stuff, and yet we're going to continue giving you all the good stuff here. You get this. Yeah, we'll move this smooth round stone onto Spot. Spot can get tough. You also get a blueberry. Okay, Spot is secondary tank. So it's very weird over here. Don't like how creepy and loamy it is. Oh, we got some Feyweed. Hooray! When the fog takes root in a plant, it turns into Feyweed. Feral or unevolved goblins can forget skills on their own. But for goblins of specific breeds, forgetting a skill requires the consumption of some Feyweed. Plucking Feyweed disperses the fog, even exercising it from nearby bodies. Oh! Okay, so the other goblins that will fight us are not just guys who are hostile. They are, like, fog-infected, potentially. Or at least without the fog, they have to run away. Okay. So now that I know that we, we just have a boat all the time... That makes the world map seem a lot less scary. Unless there's scary stuff in the water, in which case it makes the world map seem much more scary. Right, that is definitely a goblin over there in the distance. But the fog is... 
Huh, why did the fog just suddenly recede? Well, we're stepping back into it willingly. Actually, we're driving it back. Are you? No, you are actually hostile. You are actually in the fog. So th it's like a weird combination of a danger area and just fog of war that can be pushed back by exploring. So it seems there are many hostile people here. Can we see much with the bird? Well, that fragmentary memory is way over there. Up ahead we have a resting place. It doesn't even look like it's that far. There's the Feyweed. Okay, let's try to stick to the coast a little bit here. I'm gonna try to try to work our way around to that Feyweed without getting into another fight. Uh, I know I just said combat's important because XP is important, and I still believe that. But also, I'm just kind of curious how this mechanic works. All right, so we can jump you while you're separated from your friends. Uh, we probably want people to generally be a little closer than this. Let's move Nettle back a space. Or sorry, not Nettle, uh, Willow. Okay, I'm cool with this. Ah, but we are so tough. How could you possibly hope to defeat us? Alright, uh, Nettle's turn. Nettle is just gonna... Can we get around to the side? We can we're going to and then smashing so sometimes plants will grow while we're moving does moving into a space that wasn't difficult terrain at the beginning of your turn but is difficult terrain by the time you get there still end your movement because if it does that's a thing that could um that could really mess us up that we need to be very careful of uh you know what you are just fine position wise So does the grenade do friendly fire damage? Yes. Yes, it looks like it totally will. I'm still gonna do it. So did it- it completely cleared all the plant life in the spaces. Right, well this guy's never gonna get another turn, obviously. You know, I don't actually want Spot to pick that up. I want that to be distributed evenly over the team. So, Spot, you're gonna, um, move to here. Wait, can I not do that? I cannot. Okay, so there is a maximum distance up which you can attack, and we don't know exactly what it is, but it's between two and four. All right, well then, wait. Uh, Nettle should just attack and end this. Alright, some Sage and some Bloodroot. Uh, yeah, welcome aboard, Quinn. Full party. Okay, let's have a quick look. Quinn is also just a minimum level goblin. And Quinn, you get to have some Bloodroot and some Sage. Feyweed does not do anything if equipped. Okay. You know, just a bunch of goblins running around in the wilderness, getting high on whatever weeds we can find. So wait, where's the Feyweed from here? It's right there. Well, this seems like it's going to be a pretty safe trip then. I do not like how little I can see, though. The steep cliff is good in the sense that it makes it hard for enemies to find us. And bad in the sense that it makes me feel like I'm blind. Oh, dear. Oh, you guys have abilities and stuff? I... Can we run? There's a flee command, isn't there? Turn to la- okay, that's like very extreme. I am worried that we wandered into something that we're not going to be able to handle here. Well, I guess this might be a good time to find out what happens when you die. So you have a shield bash with knockback. 
applies Prideful, one healing per 16 ticks for 720 ticks. And so healing over time effects are going to be on the time system, not turn-based. That's really, um, that's really interesting. Well, I gotta be honest with you, I'm feeling pretty nervous about this one. We probably want Nyx to go first. Or, uh, Nettle, rather. No, no, I was right, Nyx. Where's Nyx? Yeah, because we want to anesthetize. So Nyx will go first, and then we'll have a skull kind of standing in front. And we gotta space everybody else out appropriately. Nyx needs to be adjacent to Pascal to do the thing. Quinn has 92 health. So Spot should be in front here. Okay. I'm worried. You are absolutely going to anesthetize. And then... I know you, have a, you only have a melee attack, but I think you're just gonna wait. This might turn out to be bad. I'm very leery of advancing into this group of enemies, though. Well, I was hoping they would come forward a little bit more. Uh, right now, my attack range doesn't quite get me any of them. We can, we can move forward a little bit. So we'll move forward, then this guy will get his turn. He won't really be able to approach us. Yeah, a move to here feels pretty safe. We can start shooting at their archer. Yeah, fortunately we have the high ground. So it, it might actually matter because we can kind of we can still see the terrain outside of the um, the battle area. I think it actually does matter where we're standing when the battle begins. So luring enemies up the hill to attack us seems like a really good strategy, actually. That's cool. I really like that. So if I move Nettle all the way forward, we can get an attack off. And it might even unnerve. But then Nettle's way out in the open. I think we're going to do it because I think... You know how I feel about offense. This will get uh, the archer behind Pascal. And, boy, I really have advanced quite a bit. They have witches and stuff. I worry. So if we move Pascal to, like, here and then throw a grenade, we can bring down that archer. I think this is the play. That feels like a pretty good open, right? Now we got spooky witches. Oh, spooky witches with their powerful witch healing. Okay, and they actually affect the, um, the system values, right? Like, this just makes there be a whole bunch of plants in addition to healing. Yeah. I am not going to, uh, fully grasp the effect of these, of <laughs> these witch characters right away. Uh, sadly, Spot cannot reach anybody. Well, we're going to put Spot up in a position such that they are serving as a blocker, at least. The question, the question really is here or here, right? I think I'm going to go all the way to this space and face this way. That'll make it real hard for the enemies to get in behind us or anything. Quinn moves up to here facing this way because the enemy doesn't really have that many ranged units and this space is untraversable yep alright you Nyx are probably just going to uh, run over here and provide another anesthetize So that looked like it did 5 plus 45. I wonder if... Ooh, I wonder if the issue is... Let me... Let me select you. Yeah, I wonder if it's like you take bonus damage when you get knocked back into a tile that you can't actually enter. That, that may be what happened there. 
Uh, so this this one's about to have a turn. There's not much we can do about it. I mean, we kind of got to just pick one and start killing, right? We gotta we gotta get to work. So shooting this one will drop them pretty low, and then we will be in position to finish them off before they get their next attack. Will uh, Quinn will be able to do that? So I think that's the shot we take. See, 32 plus 44 is not quite enough damage to finish you off. Yeah. I don't know if I even want you to move. I guess we can we can move you over to here. All right, Pascal, I think, is throwing another grenade, maybe. Right, like this gets us an unnerve on that guy. Or I could just attack, I suppose. Maybe maybe just hit this guy real hard is a better play. Yeah, probably. Because they have that AoE heal. Uh, and I think you are fine where you are. Quinn gets to... Actually, Quinn doesn't do 35 damage. Oh no, Quinn does. Okay, we gotta... We gotta kill. And then, do we want to move Quinn onto the XP just for the health? I don't exactly know how much it is. Let's find out. It was 10. Okay, so it's... It's not nothing, but it's not a big heal. Uh, I think Nettle is gonna first aid. Sadly, we're not quite gonna be able to move into a position to deal damage. Nyx is fairly tough. I think I'm actually gonna have Nyx get aggressive here. I mean, the way we're standing right now, maybe I should just refresh the anesthetize, actually. I kind of want to control their access to us as much as possible. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move to here and refresh the anesthetize on Pescal. Alright, Spot has been turned around by interfering wood witches. We're gonna have to deal with those wood witches, but I don't really think it's Spot's job. Okay, got ourselves a promote there. Um, so. How do we want to deal with the wood witches? It's actually very difficult for the people on this side of the battle to even get over there. So I think we're just going to have you... A grenade here would give this guy an unnerve. Where can I move to? Ah, almost nowhere. I'm very worried that Pascal's going to die and we're going to like completely lose our shape over here. But I don't know that there's a lot we can do about it. Alright. So this makes it so that Wood Witch either has to heal this guy or they lose him. effectively burns the witch's turn. I'm fine with that. And then we're gonna move you to like here? Somewhere somewhere over here. I want access to the other wood witch as well. I'm just trying to like think ahead. Alright, and you are gonna shoot that witch. Yeah, I do believe we are uh do believe we are going to lose. Okay, I like that though. Them not healing the witch is good for us. Boy, it's gonna be it's gonna be a minute before <laughs> Quinn here is in a position to do anything. So Nettle only hits for 32. That's really unfortunate. Well, if Nettle. Nettle can barely go anywhere. I was gonna say, if Nettle uh, unnerves the witch, 
then the witch will go after Willow. Willow Willow will get to finish the job. Oh, actually, no, Willow hits for 32. Willow will not. Oh, yeah, if I do damage. Okay. We're going to do a thing here that is probably going to result in a long-term uh, pain. But it does mean Willow gets to kill that witch. Nyx can... Actually, Nyx can just finish the witch off. Or we could have Nyx drop an anesthetize. I think we're just going to do this. I am absolutely, absolutely cool with this. It turns out you're supposed to geek the mage first. Who would have thought? Game audio is a little bit high. I will, uh, I will turn that down for future episodes. Um... I'm gonna flee. I think flee is fine, and it does give us the shot we want over here. All right, Quinn. Unfortunately, Quinn, um, the plant life keeps growing in front of Quinn, so <laughs> Quinn is having a really hard time getting anywhere. Self heals a shame. I was really hoping it was going to just uh, let us do the thing. So you can first aid yourself, and you can't really go anywhere. So I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna move on to the health. I mean, in the place I'm in right now, only one of these two can attack me, so probably that's a bad idea. This is pretty ugly all the way around, honestly. Yeah, I'm just gonna stay put. Oh hey, Nick's leveled up. Wait, did they? It says 338 of 480, didn't it say level up? I don't know. face this way because the wood witch is not my primary concern. Okay. I figured that was a possibility, but it was also a possibility if I moved. There was nothing we were really going to be able to do about that. And look! Wood witch down! We did it! It is now a three on three. And we mostly have full health. They mostly have full health. I do think their composition's a little bit better than ours. But they don't have any ranged units anymore. So I think we're gonna move to... Where can I move to to try to keep myself safest? Nowhere is great, it turns out. Right, here we at least get a decent unnerve. So I think Quinn is just moving to block the archer. And then self-anesthetizing? Okay, that's pretty cool. And then using anesthetize to remove bushes is definitely a thing that I should be trying to do in a thoughtful fashion. Oh right, I have to move if I want to shoot that guy. I think moving this way is probably a pretty good idea. Actually, if we move to here, it'll probably count as a side attack, right? And I have all this blocking terrain. Ow. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to win this. They, they just have too much health. So, the question is, do we just leave you in place? No, there's no reason to do that. I can move forward and claim this. Alright, 
So if we move Willow back, we can hopefully get this to count as a back attack. Yeah. Unnerve 2 is pretty good. Unnerve in general is pretty good. So we've done a really good job of controlling these guys. I think I want to keep moving this way because I want to I want to have a superior firing angle. And that sets up uh, Nyx really, really well, actually. And then you know what? This guy might be doomed due to unnerve. We might we might have actually pulled this off. Oh, I do. Have, yeah, shoot. I do have to move, though. I am very survive or very surprised that we survived that. Oh, sorry. It's still Nix's turn. Okay, somehow, somehow we pulled it off. So, uh, we are over the hour already. Generally, what I do is um, the impre the intention for this series, anyway, is that we will uh, we will put up about an hour of gameplay every weekday until we uh, until we have gotten our fill here. Uh, am I allowed to just save and quit right now? It doesn't actually look like it. We might have to make it to a resting place. All right. That's gonna be the plan. We're gonna we're gonna get over there and then and then call the episode there. So if we get kind of close to you, are we gonna get a little indicator on the ground? I mean it looks like you already see me, so maybe maybe drawing close enough to that enemy would just cause them to uh to run at us. Oh no, see we're getting a little indicator on these guys. I'm just kinda curious what happens if we pick the Feyweed while there's still enemies around. As much as I want XP, I also want to figure this out. Oh, hold on. We we definitely had somebody level up. Didn't we? Um, yeah, Nyx. Nyx totally has a level. Okay, so. We can pick up some interesting stuff. Uh, we can pick up first aid. Nyx already has anesthetized and there's nowhere to go from there. When an enemy moves out of an adjacent tile... Oh, attacks of opportunity. Cool. Uh, we will also get plus 10 health when we spend the skill point, apparently. An attack that does 70 damage from behind, so you can make a rogue, and for some reason that also causes... I guess... <laughs> I was gonna say for some reason that also causes the soil to be wet, but blood probably is why. Or we can make you able to sing and heal people. Boy, what do we want Nyx to be? I think let's go... let's go for a rogue. This is a thing we could use in the party. So that might mean we want to reassign some of our stuff. We probably want to give Nyx some attack, then. Um, I still want plus attack on the ranged units, but let's move this over to you. Actually, we'll trade both of these out. Alright, Quinn is tough, Nyx is stabby. And it makes sense, given the name. So, Feyweed, what did that actually do? It doesn't look like it did much in terms of pushing back the fog. Probably because we're kind of deep in the middle of it. Oh no, never mind. It just took a minute. It did, in fact, affect the fog quite a bit. And is that more? That is, in fact, more Feyweed. Well, it's right on the way. Oh, uh, we're not going to be able to get that Feyweed without engaging in combat for it. Well, I mean... I'm okay with that, I guess. So, orange level combat. It looks like there's only three of them. We might pull that guy, I guess. Here, let's, um... Let's aggro these dudes and then run back up the hill a little bit. Okay, we'll take them right here. Oh, that did not work out the way I wanted it to at all. They got the high ground for some reason. And they have... They're pretty basic, but there's a lot of them, and they have the high ground, and they have a lot of ranged units. So, 
I'm worried. A lot. This is like the opposite of the battle we just fought, where <laughs> where we now have to we now have to scale. Okay, uh, let's try to put people in positions that make sense. The climbing is going to be really tough. There's a little bit of a natural slope here, so I'm going to have Pascal right there. Willow can be in the corner. Quinn the Mighty can stand in the way. Nyx has to be in a place where we can theoretically get close to the ranged units. And then Spot, I guess, is right here. We probably want Nettle up here as well. Hold on. Let's swap these two. Okay, let's try it. I'm definitely worried. They have a lot of ranged units. Yeah, and we just don't have a we just don't have very much health, unfortunately. All right. So I wanted Nyx to go first. Because I was hoping that they would move up to an attackable distance. And they sort of did. Man, even their, um, even their weedy little ranged units have a lot more health than I would like. So orange is bad, apparently. Orange is a, orange is a dangerous amount of difficulty. <laughs> Oh, that's really rough that you have to end your turn here, because that means next turn we'll have to end in a single movement. But, I mean, they have the range advantage. We kind of have to approach. Maybe we should have given Nyx the heal. I probably don't want to stay all the way in the back. I wish this spot was not impassable, because I want to shoot at the thing that's already taken damage. But to do so, we have to really expose ourselves. Alright, well, we're going to be able to kill it at least. Yeah, this, this looks real grim. Quinn is pretty much just run forward. It's a shame these spaces don't provide any cover or anything. Yeah, we're just gonna get chopped up real bad by ranged attacks. Uh, Pascal has very limited movement because of all the damn plants. We can't even get to a place where I'm gonna be able to throw a useful grenade. Well, actually, that's not entirely true. I can do something from right here. Ooh, did it actually change the terrain? It, it destroying the plant life is good for us, for sure. Um, but I think it might also have actually re-leveled that terrain a little bit. Yeah, this is... This is gonna end real soon here. I did not realize the number of ranged enemies that we were running into. And when I dragged the enemies back to try to get superior position on them, um, I think some stuff came in from the side of us. So I'm pretty sure I made the uh, made the encounter more difficult by doing that. So obviously that's not great. Right, let's get a little bit of healing. Can't actually hit you from behind, but I can do this. So, I think I'm actually going to go after this guy. 52. You have 65 health, but we wouldn't be able to hit you a second time due to your position. So I think this is right. And then we face this way. And Quinn, my poor dude. <laughs> There's very little we can do for you, Quinn. So, 
24 and 14. Okay, you, you can definitely get a kill. Nettle can do a thing. Uh, let's move Nettle to, like, here? Oh, I want Nettle... I was going to say I want Nettle kind of away from the main combat, but I guess it's not going to matter very much because all of our enemies have ranged weapons. Yeah, I'm still going to move to here, and then we're going to kill this guy, but... It's not good. Yeah, we, we could not, sadly, have gotten much further from the combat than that. Alright, well, you get to move to here, and then at least throw a decent grenade. Yeah, the grenade is definitely having an effect on the actual terrain. That's really cool. Maybe some early anesthetizes? I don't know. It's it's hard to imagine that I, that I could have done things differently enough for it to matter, because, like, look at how many attackers they're still going to have left here. Uh, well... I mean, Quinn's turn seems pretty straightforward, at least. Also, I really like the tension in this music. Uh, so none of these guys are really damaged. Yeah, there's not really anything you can do except just punch somebody. I guess the move is... Go here punch you. And then that makes the grenade a little bit better. Right, because now it'll kill that guy. So we move you to here, I think. I mean, I'll say this, Pascal is really tough, and if they keep stacking their dudes up, maybe we can get something out of that. Oh, you're gonna die, aren't you? No, you narrowly survive. Okay. So... What we want Quinn to do is hit this guy. Right, because this guy's already going to die to the grenade. Oh, I guess... I guess it doesn't... It probably doesn't end up mattering very much. Because the right move is going to be to throw the grenade here, I think. Well, it depends on how this guy moves, I suppose. Yeah, alright. So that makes... That does make a little bit of a difference. So move to here. Grenade goes there. And we almost don't die, but I'm pretty sure it's only almost. No, curse your own nerve. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna unnerve me to death. It was pretty close. Um I think flee home. There's no way we're gonna be able to pull this off, right? What happens if I hit flee? Are we... It looks like there's only five of us now? No, we're all here. Did I... Oh, I, yeah, I was just not seeing one of us. So we didn't lose any progress aside from spatial progress. It just, it just teleported us back to our safer... That's pretty cool, actually. So, okay. It does, in fact, have an indication. I'm assuming that the, um, the little boxy thing underneath the damage value is an indication that it lowers the terrain. I'm going to... I think I'm going to just level up his grenade skill. Oh yeah, I want the extra range for sure. Yeah, so we'll focus on that. Somebody's got to pick up Song. Song is a really good idea. We will totally get there. So, where will regroup if we get separated? Do I save at home? Nope. Can't do that. Maybe it just auto-saves when we quit? I guess we're going to find out. I think we're going to try to call it here. 
that is going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Like I said, the plan here is for there to be about an hour of gameplay every weekday until we uh, until we figure this thing out. There might be some extra, because this is starting on a Wednesday, um, there might be some extra episodes, uh, just so that this isn't a really short week for us. So, uh, come back later today for some more Tenderfoot Tactics, and we'll see you then.